It is time. What's up? This is Michael Menard. I'm on Galaxy Jams, and we are listening to Fairport Conventions crazy man michael and i grew up on this song my parents listened to this we actually sampled it on the first pretty lights album um nice. and it, it it's it's a i i just love the story because it's a story about how like through love and hu or through like loving something you can destroy it you know it's about a guy who who um loves this woman and is taking a walk and this bird comes and tells him that despite his love for the woman, he's going to kill her, you know? And he gets so enraged that he kills the bird and it turns into the woman, you know? Oh, wow. And and the rest of his life, he walks around the world trying to find parts of nature that'll talk to him to find his love, you know? Dang. Wow. That's wild. Super deep. That's why I love it, it kind of has a cool story. And when I was a kid, it kind of fucked me up because it was Crazy Man yeah. Michael and I always put it on. I'm like, is this what's going to happen to me? So. <laughs> Never. <laughs> All right, let's uh, get right into it. God, what a story! Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's it, it, you know, it's, it's one of those, it's one of those songs that like I wouldn't normally be into this kind kind of music. I'm not too into like kind of you know Celtic kind of folk stuff or mm -hmm. bluegrass type stuff too much. Um, but like, and and the singer from this band sang on a Led Zeppelin's album four on oh, the wow. Battle. Oh wow. Uh, so, so that's that was another connection that I was kind of like, you know, okay, this is worth checking out. But yeah, it's I love this story, even though it's sad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think, Nate? What does it remind you of? Uh, it reminds me, you know, it's funny with my eyes closed. I was picturing like Joni Mitchell or someone like. Right, me. right, right. Um, but like you said, that kind of real old school folky, like chord progression and everything. I don't, I don't know. We I, we miss storytelling like this in, in music nowadays. Right. I feel like. Exactly. I want to hear Jack White cover this song. I feel like he would like. Oh, that would be amazing. This yeah. Is, yeah, that's a great point, Nate, is that I think that more and more people try and cut out, they try and trim the fat from like everything that they're doing. They try and make everything so streamlined. Single and, has to be three minutes or less and blah, blah, yeah, blah. Well, blah. And, and nowadays, a lot of music serves the purpose of being background, you know? Yeah. Right, people, yeah. Like have such short attention spans that like, oh, wow, yeah. you know, like people like people don't put on a record and listen to it themselves. They're putting it on when they're hanging out or driving and talking to people. So they, like, they mm -hmm. don't have time to listen to a five minute story. You know, we were just talking about that in the last time, how like listening to records was a hands-on experience. And when you can just throw on Spotify, 
it's just it can be background right yeah and, and it can it just helps it makes you more add because like you can just like when you're when you're listening to a record like you're committed unless you want to get up and and take the needle off and, and take that thing put it yeah. in the sleeve take the other one out of the sleeve put it back in right as opposed to like you know spotify you're just like shuffle 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 and uh yeah. you're right you probably wouldn't sit down and listen to a five and a half minute celtic folk story you know yeah which, well and, 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 you know, like, even if you didn't like the record, you probably listened to it because it wasn't like you had a million records that you could listen to yeah. after that. Yep. And yep. that was something I, I missed. I mean, I love having the access to all the music, but it's made me ADD. And I love concept albums and albums yeah. that have narrative flow. But it's like, you know, I remember growing up when, like, I'd get a CD and it'd be in my car the whole summer, you know? And now I listen to it and it's like, it takes me back to that time. And I'm I'm a little bit sad that some that some of us won't be able to experience that kind of you know that musical photo album that happens when you like well, fall in love with an album and different songs become your favorite over the course of months you know yeah yeah well yeah. thankfully i think vinyl records are making a, a big comeback so cool. uh hopefully people can get more into it um why don't we uh keep going yeah I'm at a renaissance fair. Feels like an Edgar Allan Poe poem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The story is very Edgar Allan Poe, yeah. interesting at the end it's almost like it yeah it goes less never, dark and more like hey don't covet something maybe i yeah, don't know i liked how it's like you know it talks about how he's crazy he's talking to the you know the plants and the trees and the flowers <laughs> but they're like his eyes are sane and his speech is clear you know it's like mm, he's like not actually saying he just sees like he actually sees the life and everything you know yeah yeah um I really like, uh, you mentioned that you used this as a sample in one of your albums. And so what yeah. makes you pick a song to use as a sample? Do you pick the sample and then you make the song around the sample? Or do you make the song and you're like, oh, like, I, I you know, I'm going to try different things and see what fits or a little bit of both. It started, like with this one, it started with that sample, you know? Okay. Um, because it was just something that like had kind of, like that song had just stuck with me since I was a young boy. And I just, at some point I was just like, you know what? I, I think I could make this into something, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and it turned out really great. It's the song's called waiting for her. And it's off of, uh, taking every precious time by pre-lights. Nice. 
Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for sharing that. It was so interesting to hear an insight. You know, one thing that I love doing about this is the guests bring songs that's like I totally wouldn't expect that it would be, you know, to bring. And it's so interesting how influences come from all sorts of the place to make a thing oh, yeah. that you never really expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good music is good music, you know? Amen yeah. to yes. that. Hell yeah. All I also right. want to say real quick, it, it's kind of funny. I feel like nowadays um, we get really caught up in signal chains and uh -huh. tone chasing. And don't get me wrong, as a guitar player, I, I'm a tone chaser myself. But you could tell on that recording, that was probably what, like a room mic? I mean, maybe yeah. I'm being like right. a little crude. But like, in other words, you can write brilliant songs and tell great stories without all, like, we don't need to chase all this yeah, gear. So yeah. Bunch of Motown was recorded all at once in a room with like a couple mics, you know, yeah. like it's you the know, best Led songs Zeppelin, ever. Led it's... Zeppelin's giant drum sound comes from like two or three mics, you know. So it's like, I feel like as technology gets more and more, people get focused on trying to find, you know, that perfect sound that's yeah. like gonna drive the whole entire thing. Yeah. And like, I feel like we, you know, hopefully there's gonna be a resurgence in this straight up good songwriting. That's the only thing propelling the song, right? Mm -hmm. I know, I know that me even with like, cause I'm, I work in, uh, in Dawes and everything and, and I'm trying to understand them to make my own music and I will just obsess over a tone that is so like, I don't know the, the average ear wouldn't even tell the difference, but I'm thinking to myself, exactly. what does a professional music producer think? So I have to, I have to think like them and then kind of going back to what we just said, where this person just had like a, maybe a room mic and three instruments or two instruments and it's good music. And it's uh, it's uh, that's something like I want to personally hold on to and remember when I'm trying to write yeah. music. Yeah, I, I bet when you're writing music at the level that you are, Michael, I, I bet it's easy to get caught in like this chase of a rabbit hole to try and like you keep fidgeting and fidgeting, you know. Yeah. I mean, I stopped like using a lot of VSTs and like MIDI recording on DAWs because I found myself sitting there and focusing on like all the potential of one little sound in it, which yep. is good sometimes. <laughs> Like, but but at the same time, it's like if I like the synth sound enough to record something with it, I should just keep it and then manipulate it afterwards. You know, I, I actually like have that. actually I'm really glad you said that, Michael. Um, so you'll just take you'll just take like a MIDI sound from a synth directly instead of trying to go through a VST, like something you'll play yeah, like, yeah, physically. Yeah. Like I'll I'll either you know I'll if I'm using a VST because I use VSTs and 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 soft synths. But I'll I'll flatten it and, and I'll freeze and flatten it so it becomes just an audio wave, you know. Because right. one, it helps the CPU, and two, it just keeps me from sitting there and being like, well, maybe I can make that more crunchy or more, you know. It's like because you can do that with plugins these days afterwards, and you can manipulate it. and I can always go back and find it again, you know. If it's right. if it's that bad, that's not the right sound, then that's not the right sound. Then I don't need to be worried about trying to recreate it, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, definitely. 